tell you a story about the time when I had to tell my boss what the moon was. The moon. I was working at an ad agency at the time, and one of our clients had a name that had something to do with the moon, Luna something. We'll call them Luna Corp, whatever. They were hiring, and we were doing an ad that was promoting the fact that they were hiring, so I was trying to get people to apply for this job, and the thought crossed my mind, we're the brightest star in the sky. Of course, the moon is not a star, so I changed it to the brightest object in the sky. Yeah, I know, it's a terrible idea for an ad, but I was brainstorming and that's what came out. But a day or two later, I'm presenting these ideas to our branch manager, and keep in mind, this is not my boss, this is my boss's boss. This is the lady who runs all of Texas. But I threw this idea out there to her. Because even though I knew that idea sucked, uh, a lot of times a really bad idea can spark a good idea, so I went ahead and threw it out there. So I said, picture the moon, brightest object in the sky, and then she stopped me and she said, well, why not the brightest star in the sky? And I kind of chuckled and I said, yeah, I thought about that myself, but you know, the moon's not a star, so. And then, I swear to God, she looked me in the eye and she said, the moon's a star. Again, this is the head of my office. How do I possibly answer this without sounding like a condescending ass? Well, actually, no, it's, it's not a star. Then what is it? It's the moon? She just stared at me like I had Axl Rose coming out of my ear. I mean, the moon's a satellite. It, it, it orbits around the Earth. It's not, it's not a star. The moon's a satellite? Well, I mean, it, it's a big rock. The, the sun's a star. <sighs> what? You know, this isn't a good idea. We got better ones here. We can just move on. Kill me. Kill me now. The most incredibly awkward meeting of all time aside, what is the moon? Sure, it's a giant rock orbiting our planet, but what does that mean to us? How has that shaped us, both culturally and as a species? We do have a psychological connection to the moon. Crime rates tend to go up under a full moon. We associate with danger, werewolves, for example. In ancient times, the moon was connected to gods. The term lunatic, for example, comes from the word luna, Latin for moon. But our connection with the moon goes way deeper than that. In fact, without the moon, we probably wouldn't exist. And here's five reasons why. Five. Now we all know that the moon's gravity causes tides, so no moon, no tides. Actually, there would be tides caused by the sun's gravity, but they'd only be about 40% the size they are now. A world without tides would obviously have very different coastlines, but tidal pools are where many scientists believe that life first began. And then once life began, high and low tides were what helped bring life out of the water and onto the land. So without the moon, we might still be swimming around in the ocean. Or not exist at all. The Earth-Moon system is very unique because we have a very large moon relative to our size, and that creates something of a gyroscopic effect. And this helps keep our spin incredibly stable. Just like a gyroscope doesn't wobble, our Earth's spin has remained at a pretty much constant 23 degree tilt for billions of years. Without our moon, the wobble would be way worse, causing extreme seasons and ice ages that would make complex life very hard to evolve. Remember, it took two billion years for single-celled organisms to evolve into multicellular organisms, and that was on a relatively stable planet. The moon's gravity causes gravitational friction, which slows the Earth's rotation by one second every 56,000 years. But over a few billion years, that adds up. So if life had taken hold without a moon, it would be very different from us, acclimated to four hour periods of night and day. The sun would rise at 7 a.m. and then set before noon, followed by an afternoon night and then an evening sunrise and then a midnight sunset. We can only imagine how this would have changed the evolution of life on Earth, which means... All the reasons above point to the fact that if life had begun on this planet without a moon, the conditions that created that life would have made something so far different from what we know, it wouldn't resemble us in any way. And the possibility that intelligent life formed far less. And it might have been horribly misshapen and weird because number five, the Earth has an amazing magnetic sphere that deflects cosmic rays from hitting the Earth and solar flares from the sun from reaching the planet's surface. And some of that is the atmosphere, but the magnetic sphere is the main source of our protection. 
And the cosmic ray thing is a serious issue when it comes to long distance space travel. The Apollo astronauts are the only people in human history that have traveled outside of our magnetic sphere. And studies have shown an alarming increase in death caused by cardiovascular and heart disease as opposed to the rest of the population, including Neil Armstrong. Now they don't know the exact correlation between cosmic rays and cardiovascular disease, but 43% of the astronauts that have traveled out there have had this issue. It's only one in 10 in the general population. And experiments with mice have shown the same cardiovascular issues. So the idea that astronauts headed to Mars will be bombarded with these rays for 18 months is a bit of a problem. Remember the Apollo astronauts were only out there for eight days. They'd all die of a heart attack before they even get there. But the reason we have this wonderful magnetosphere is because of our internal dynamo, which is easily the coolest named thing on our planet. The general scientific consensus is that the dynamo is created by a spinning inner core of iron that causes convection currents in the molten outer core. So we basically have like a spinning basketball inside of our planet, except there's no basketball player and the basketball is a 10,000 degree ball of iron. There's simply no other explanation that explains the tremendous amount of power that's required to create this awesome magnetic field. So all you people asking me to do a hollow earth video can now stop. Seriously, please stop. We are also the only known rocky planet with a dynamo at its core. Mercury, Venus, Mars, none of them have the magnetic field that we do. And things didn't work out so well for them. Because without that shield, solar wind and cosmic rays pick apart molecules in the upper atmosphere, changing the composition and the density of the atmosphere to some pretty disastrous results. So any life that did form on this planet would have been shaped by the constant bombardment of these cosmic rays. Or it might have just been a big massive boot on the neck of progress. But why does our planet have a dynamo where others don't? It might have to do with how we got the moon. The Theia hypothesis states that the moon was formed when a Mars-sized planet that many scientists have called Theia smashed into the Earth at an oblique angle over four billion years ago. And the resulting debris from this collision eventually formed the moon. But that same collision may have jump-started the Earth's dynamo or rearranged the guts of the inner Earth to the point that a dynamo could form. So the massive impact that almost destroyed our planet pretty much became our saving grace. Thanks, moon. Granted, it's possible that intelligent life can form without a moon, but some scientists feel so strongly about the moon's connection to us as a species that they want to actually include that as part of the Drake's equation, that a large moon is almost essential to the creation and maintenance of life. At least if scientists were to find an Earth-sized exoplanet with a large moon around it, they would probably be taking a very close look at that one. Thanks for watching. If this is your first time here, I hope you hit subscribe because I got a lot more videos just like this coming your way. If you're not brand new and you liked it, Hit like and share it on your social media. And if you're a true answer file, you can join us on Patreon where you can get exclusive perks that nobody else gets. Now you go out there and have an eye-opening week and I will see you next time. Love you guys. Take care.